Mr. Crispin here today with some cam and for those not in the trade that's cardboard aided modelling and this is a model of a cylinder block and uh, I need to make two of these and in the upcoming uh, videos that's what I'm going to do um, typically if you wanted one of these uh, cylinders or a pair of these in this size you'd buy castings uh, either out of uh, cast iron or bronze but from the model engineering suppliers a pair of castings for something like this is about £300 so I've opted to make them from solid so what you see here in cardboard I'm going to make out of mild steel and uh, then insert two cast iron liners cast iron being a good material for cylinders you may have seen these in my last video one larger liner for the main core and one smaller liner which is the valve liner and they sit something like that this is a uh, life size model so in this video I'm going to describe what goes on inside here this being a piston valve cylinder and I'm also going to touch on another common uh, cylinder valve system which is the slide valve so I've got some drawings and moving bits as you will now see this face makes on the side of the locomotive this end points forwards and this end points backwards so there's a pair of blanking covers on this end and on this side there are two glands for piston rods to run in and out of the rest of the shape really is just to get rid of metal and I'll uh, come on to how I'm going to produce these shapes um, by milling in a later video so I've made a diagram to explain and I'm going to stick this on the outside on the front of the cylinder I've basically drawn a, uh, a cross section as you can see there, there's the main bore there's the uh, bore of this liner known as the steam chest and uh, looking from the top there's the steam chest again so to zoom in a bit this circle represents a pipe and this pipe brings the hot steam from the boiler down into the steam chest and from the front view that is uh, represented by this solid blue circle that is the steam appearing in through the back into this chamber steam can come in here but what about the rest of the cylinder well these blue squares represent the exhaust ports so steam can leave through these two slots and escape back to the chimney now to explain what these grooves are I'll quickly remove the liner so a bit more detail first of all you should be able to see five ports or slots around the circumference and this is in two positions we're at the identical down here and just as important as the slot is the little piece of metal left in between if we look down here hopefully you can see that piece of metal left in between is flush with the bore and that means a piston can travel in and out without getting stuck in any grooves and in actual fact it is a piston that runs up and down this bore as you'll shortly see that controls whether the steam's allowed in or out if we look on the outside however you can see that even where there is a piece of metal it's actually recessed out so we've got a groove and then five slots and that means that when this is inside a bore no matter which port the steam comes out of it can get down to wherever the passage will be which will be uh, here approximately so if the steam comes out of the top port it can travel around and go out to the bottom if it comes out around the back somewhere it can come out and go down the passage and that is basically the design behind the recess amp the other crucial thing is the shape of the port now I went to quite some trouble to make these long slots a lot of people stick with a PCD of holes if we imagine this is the piston that's about to travel back and forth uh, to either let steam in or out and we'll say this is the edge that's the decider on this port which is the slot we currently have nothing full cross section nothing we get a very sharp on and a very sharp off which is what we want with a PCD of holes we get nothing 
a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more, full, a little bit less, a little bit less, even less, nothing. We don't ever get a definite on or off. It's an increasing amount, then a decreasing amount. And um, that is why I went to the trouble of making slots. And that is what these little missing portions and passages represent. It's the way the steam can escape right the way around the groove and enter the passage. So, now we know that, we can look at how it works. Well, the ultimate goal is to power this piston backwards and forwards. We know that steam comes in here, we know it can escape here and here, and we know it can travel through these passages. But we need some way of controlling the order in which all those things happen. So in the case of this cylinder we have another piston. And this is drawn in cross section. So basically it's a solid piston with a recess all the way around the middle. So here for instance steam can come in through the steam inlet and fill this cavity all the way around the piston. And uh, one thing to say is the relationship between this piston and the piston valve are, is all set up in the valve gear and uh, they have different lengths of stroke but I'll explain that another day. Steam's coming in and filling this cavity. The valve opens pretty rapidly and steam is given access to the full groove around the circumference where it all converges, comes down the passage and ends up behind this piston. This is forced in this direction and away we go. As this is travelling, the exhaust gases on this side of the piston are forced down this passage out into this cavity and escape through the exhaust. The piston continues to travel and this valve starts to close. As the piston gets further this way, the valve closes even more. And when we get right down here, the valve shuts off completely. And now you'll notice that at this end the gases are totally sealed in. And what happens there is as the piston makes its final movements this way, the trapped gases cause a cushioning effect. And this helps to slow the piston down before it shoots back the other way. So when the piston's flying up and down here quickly, it gives a bit of a break and a slowdown in the momentum so that it doesn't shock the mechanical components so much. So we then allow the valve to keep going, again it opens pretty rapidly, we start going and off we go down with full steam access to this side. So where we go, the exhaust gases can exhaust and once again as we start to get down here the valve slowly closes until we have the same cushioning effect and we're ready to set off back in the other direction. So that is the basic cycle. So one detail to add is that from the cab you can actually change the positioning and the stroke of this piston valve in relation to the main piston. And why would you want to do that? Well, when you've got a cold cylinder or you're starting off, you want full power. So you want the valve to open and the piston to be given a very powerful push. If, however, you're at a high speed and the cylinder's nice and hot and you've got lots of momentum, you may choose to be more economical with the steam. And if you want to do that, you can wind a lever in the cab and that will prevent this valve from letting as much steam into the cylinder. So this time we might set off, but when the piston gets to about here, the valve can close. And now, no more steam is allowed in. Instead, what's happening is the steam that's already in here is expanding and pushing the piston forwards with its own growth in volume. So, the piston is being driven totally by the expansion of the steam. Obviously, the exhausting is taking place the same, but this time we've used a fraction of the steam that we used initially when we wanted to get going. So that's one detail. A few more points on the design of the cylinder. One thing you might have spotted is that the high pressure steam is only ever within the piston. And this is known as an internal admission valve where, where the very high pressure steam is only ever within 
these two walls of the piston or down into the main cylinder. The ends of this cylinder are only ever exposed to exhaust pressures which is about 5 psi in this case and that is beneficial because the joint on these end caps is far less stressed not to mention uh, the gland that this will be running in is operating under much lower pressure so rather than the 80 or however many psi is coming into the main part of this piston valve the ends are only ever exposed to 5 psi so there is an explanation of the piston valve cylinder called a piston valve of course because all the valve work is controlled by a piston but a lot of you may be familiar with the slide valve engine which works in basically the same way other than instead of having a piston moving in and out it has a plate instead of having a round cylinder here you'd have a rectangular cavity or a square cavity and in the bottom instead of a piston sliding in and out you'd have a plate sliding over the top as shown here so here we have a flat plate sliding on the top of a flat inlet port so whereas we had the piston before now we've got a plate and this works in the same way first of all the steam here is coming in from the top and the exhaust is at the bottom and this surface here is flat as is the face of this slide valve in the same way as before I'll start the piston down here but notice the steam is on the outside of the valve this time so whereas before we had internal admission sealed in by these walls this time it's external the steam is confined to the outside exposing the end cap at both ends and this gland to full boiler pressure in terms of operation much the same as before the steam can now flow down into the back the piston can start to move it can exhaust out into this cavity and into the exhaust port there this continues to travel it gets shut off it gets cushioned steam is allowed in it travels back you can shut the steam off early if you want to much the same as before but one of the main disadvantages of this is that you've got a flat surface running on a flat surface with full boiler pressure pressing down on top and that creates a huge amount of friction all around this surface that leads to a lot of wear and a loss in efficiency and I'm showing this really to demonstrate some differences in design if you think back to the piston valve where we had a round piston running in a round liner very little force is required to actually move it so the slide valve has its uses it's used on many of the model steam engines you see and many full size locomotives Stevenson's rocket for instance employed this kind of slide valve design the piston valve engine however has been proven to be of a superior design so all valves aside I hope that was understandable and provided some information on steam engine cylinders in the next video I'm going to take some roughed out blocks of mild steel and start producing the bores in which to put the liners and then uh, subsequently bore the liners. I'm going to be doing that on the lathe using a horizontal boring setup. So until then, thanks for watching and see you on the next video.